Poetic, I need all the wins. Yeah. yeah. Pay no L's, gotta get a no call to quit. Yeah. yeah. Gotta keep on moving no matter how hard it gets. Yeah. yeah. Better move out the way cause I'm coming with harder hits. My head is as hard as a brick, but I'm harder than all of this. You yeah. better move, you might get knocked out. Knocked out. You yeah. better move, you might get knocked out. Knocked out. Yeah. You yeah. better move, you might get knocked out. That's how I get it, success ain't no giving, some days I don't hit, I don't sleep When I'm focused on dying, just down, wonder when I'm anxious Ain't no limit till I tank, I'm running on fumes The opposition don't amaze, the roads whistle through the pavement Get your hands out of my bag, I know that's because I've been in it I don't need to brag, I guess that's what happens When you taking care of your business, but some friendly, you do the math I'm out of my pocket, Houston, we got a problem, I ain't perfect Let them watch me, elevating, got them nuts Cause I'm the pilot in the cockpit, nose diving in the house And woo, watch out, get it here, watch out, get it here, watch out, get it here Woo, it's time! Welcome to DFS by the Numbers with your host, Brady. Better move, you might get knocked out. What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers and welcome to Best Bet for UFC 300. We have Jamal Hill going against Alex Pereira. In what is an absolute historic card here, a card that is stacked from top to bottom. We got 13 fights, 13 great fights, and I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to this show. I've been looking forward to it all week. Looking forward to the, the people on. Looking forward to talking it with the chat as well. We got uh, Uncle Weezy. We got Gordo. And we got Guru Scouting MMA. Uh, what is up, guys? What is up, chat? We'll start with you, Weezy. Weezy, I have a feeling you're looking forward to UFC 300. How could you not, man? You know, I mean, we've had some you know, okay cards the last couple of weeks. Look two weeks ahead. There's like three good fights and like a lot of like, why are you doing this fight type of card? But we're going to live in the moment right now, Brady. UFC 300, it's tonight. And we get to gamble on it. We get to watch some of the best fighters that's ever walked into that octagon square off against each other. It's a tough week for gambling because no matter who you're betting against, you're betting against an elite fighter. That has paths to victory. So we got to be real careful this week. We got to really know what our strategy is as a better, what we do best, and kind of attack those weak spots in the defense. And I'm hoping that we can find them together today so that we can stack cash tickets like flapjacks for this, the UFC 300 card, the best card of the year. I'm fired up, guys. I am as well, but I'll I'll be honest, this comment did catch me off guard to to kick off the show. Brady being in his 20s is so insane, thought the dude was pushing 40. I mean, in in what world am I am I pushing 40? I mean, dude, when 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 you lost money on Loopy, we were all really worried about you for a minute. You look like you aged. You look like Barack Obama after two years in office when all of a sudden he was like completely gray and he had this distant stare in his eye. But you've you've come back. You look great. You know, you you look revitalized. Yeah, I mean, I I get I look a little older, but pushing 40 is kind of wild. I mean, when I was 10 years old, people thought I was like 18, but but my goodness, you know, I'm not I'm not pushing, I'm not pushing 40. Uh, but we got Gordo in the building. Gordo, are you looking forward to UFC 300? I very much am, man. There's not much to say uh, additionally to this one. We know how good of a card it is, and it's going to come out here and it's going to deliver. I have been looking forward to this one for a very, very long time, so the only thing left to do is try to make some money on it because we know it's going to be entertaining. It should be a fun one, so I'm excited to hear all your takes as well. Give the best I can here and hope we can come out with a profit because we'll should be, pro- we should be profited in entertainment, if that one made sense. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And yeah, I wasn't expected to be compared to Barack Obama today, but uh, it is UFC 300. Anything goes apparently I, I i in the past i look like barack obama i can i can dig it uh we got guru guru you've been uh you've been scheduled i think you're scheduled for the longest for this show it's been something we've been looking forward to how's it feel to be on for ufc 300 oh no oh no and you're muted the pressure am... now you're back I, am i back you're yes back. i'm in listen yeah. i'm unbelievably excited to be here um I should have been here sooner. So even if you can't see my face when the chat's going, I'm smiling because this card on paper, let's just be honest, could be the best card in UFC history. And I know, listen, we're all fight fans. We all get hyperbolic. The next fight is always the best fight. But on paper, this card could truly be the best card in UFC history. 
Hundred percent on on paper, yeah. And then I think I think it it could end up delivering by the end of the night. I would be shocked if this car did not deliver whatsoever. Um, but uh, before we get started, a couple things. If you guys can please do me a favor, uh, like the video, subscribe here to the channel DFS by the numbers, and then go subscribe to these guys as well. I did link all three of their YouTube channels down in the description. And I want to get a little scenario going uh, since it is a big card UFC three hundred. In this scenario, you the chat. I want you guys to be Jalen Turner. And I want the like button to be Bobby Green. And I am going to be Carrie Hatley. And in this case, you guys are going to smash the like button. And I, as Carrie Hatley, I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to stop you from doing it because I'm Carrie Hatley. And I'm going to let you guys hit that like button over and over. Let's get these likes up. Let's try to just let's let's set a, a like record. I mean, it's a big card. So um, I, as Carrie Hatley, I'm not stopping you from from liking the, the video. And you guys need a Jalen Turner, that like button. Um, but with all that out of the way, oh, let's shout the chat. You know, how, how rude of me. we got to shout the chat here. The chat is moving. I'm going to try to keep up with the chat as best as possible. But I am going to um, be the, the moderator. I'm going to be the host. I'm going to be participating as well. So it's kind of tough to get every, everything, but we'll, we'll see how we do. We got Steven in the building. We got Brandon. We got Jeff F. And I do have to always be careful with some of these names on here because some of them, they do try to trick you and I do not want to be canceled. So uh, Damari, what is up? Eric the Red. We got Dixon Sider. There we go. First one that that, that got me. We got Benino. We got Tom, Brandon C., uh, Jason Waterfalls. We got Thoja. Thoja Beats in the building. What is up, Thoja Beats? Uh, he does some beats for my uh, my YouTube shorts and my, my Instagram shorts. So shout out to Thoja. Uh, we got two and fighter fade UFC. We got Rev Beaver. What is up? D nice Darren Hawk one King J Poncho Mateus John. So yeah, appreciate you guys was able to shout out a lot of you guys without, you know, saying some of these, some of you guys have just terrible names, like <laughs> some terrible names. So I um, was able to, to get away with all that. All right. I say we get right into it then. And we're going to refresh these odds. Get them up to date. Curious to see where the lines are moving on fight. I haven't really checked today. But the first fight of UFC 300, it's a great one. It's uh, Davison Figueredo going against Cody Garbrandt. And by the looks of it, money is pouring in on, on Figgy uh, on fight day. He's now minus 340. He was sitting around minus 300 uh, for the majority of the week. It looks like people are putting in maybe their last second parlay. So Davison Figueredo now a minus 340 favorite. And Cody Garbrandt is sitting as a plus 280 underdog. I'll kick it to you, Uncle Weezy. Uh, a reminder, we do have 13 fights, so we're going to give out 10 bets, and three of these fights will be passed on. Weezy, are you passing on the first fight of the card, or is there something that you like on this one? No, I'm not. I'm going to go uh, fight goes to decision for this fight at plus 155 right now. I got it at plus 150 earlier in the week. It's not something that the data particularly loves in terms of how many of these guys' fights have finished, you know, going to the scorecards, especially when they're scheduled for three rounds. But there were a couple of things in the stats that caught my eye. Uh, Davison Figueredo attempts 6.8 distance strikes per minute spent at distance. Cody Garbrandt attempts 7.74. Like for Figueredo, that's five below the divisional average. He's he's low volume. And Cody Garbrandt is fast and very difficult to find. We got a big cage here. We got a lot of room for both of these guys to move. And there might be a, a stretch of time here where Davison and Cody kind of try to figure out which one's going to go first. And they might not come to an agreement about who's going to go first for a while. This has the look to me of a bet that could absolutely finish inside the distance. Both of these guys have power and accuracy, and we know that Cody's not the most durable guy in the world, but it could also look like the best bet in the world in hindsight because these guys might not do much. And I think it's all been a little bit overblown. The $300,000 bonuses about how many fights now people think are going to finish that they weren't necessarily concerned were going to finish prior to that announcement. I would suggest that people be careful about that. That's a narrative thing. It's very hard to quantify. And also, this is UFC 300. See, these are some of the best fighters on the planet. You don't just get to go out there and finish a lot of these guys easily. You know, they're 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 really good fighters. So I think that um, a lot of these violence lines are getting juiced. I'm taking the I'm going the other way here and and saying that this first one sees the scorecards plus 155. 
Yeah, there's some uh, there's some talk about that 300k bonus. It's a very big talking point. Um, once Dana announced that, everybody on Twitter was just doing like full card uh, violence parlays. Yeah, and a lot of people were asking me my thoughts on the 300k bonus, and I agree with you, Weezy, in a sense that for, for me personally, I was already picking like a ton of finishes, so it, it doesn't really change my analysis of the fights. Um, so yeah, the 300k bonus, it's awesome. Um, it could change things, could not, but my thoughts have not changed really on any fight from that information but for this fight specifically um i kind of agree with you wheezy in a sense that i could see just a lot not happening in this fight like this could look like the this this like a sweat free over bed just because both guys are very low volume and cody garbrandt's a guy that you know he's always been pretty low volume but nowadays especially he can't afford to go out there and and stand and bang with these guys especially figgy um, but I'm going to pass on this one. I can see this fight playing out in many different ways. I think this fight could go to decision. I think it could, as, as sad as it sounds, be the most boring fight on the card. But, you know, if Figgy does land a big shot, maybe he can get uh, a Garbrandt out of there. Somebody passing on the first fight of the night. Nothing really sticking out on this one for me. Uh, we'll go to Guru. Uh, what are you liking for the first fight of UFC 300? You know, it's funny. There's like my my gut reaction when this first fight came out before i did the tape was exactly what uh you guys were saying with the fight goes the distance i really really was close to that but um as i continued to look at it i just kind of decided that who is cody like faced in terms of like are we sure his chin issues are fixed and i, I think we all probably resoundingly say no they're probably not fixed and who does he face he faced brian boom kelleher who's a grappler and he faces Trevin Jones, who did absolutely positively nothing in that fight. I mean, it was embarrassing. So Figgy, while he's kind of notorious for exactly what you guys are saying, be, being a low-volume striker, uh, he's so dangerous and he will win moments. And I just don't know that uh, Cody's chin can handle even a single moment. I mean, getting knocked out by the young, the young Punisher, old man Pedro Munoz, is like, you know, I that one still lives rent-free in my mind. So, you know, you talk about EPO, TJ Dillashaw all you want. You still got to live with the Pedro Munoz one as well. So give me, I've got Davison Figueredo round one or round two grouping at uh, at plus money. Uh, I think like plus 135. Uh, I don't know if you got any better, but uh, yeah. So I, I like I said, I mean, like you guys said, honestly, if – he doesn't finish it round one, round two. There's a very good chance they're just staring at each other and it goes the distance anyway. So might as well get off the minus 340 Figueredo ticket because who knows what's going to happen with these judges. Just because it's UFC 300 doesn't mean they're going to judge well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, especially, you know, I mean, the judges have been just terrible lately and don't expect anything different here. And yeah, that's a good point you mentioned at the end. Like if, you know, if Davis and Figueredo, if this fight goes to decision, Davison's not looking minus 340 you know, nowhere close to it. So if you're going to play Davis and you might as well probably play that inside the distance. Um, so we got inside the distance for uh, Guru taking the one. Oh, two. I got it. It's so, it's so, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Round one, round yeah. two. One, two. Exactly. He's, he's got six. He's got six round two knockouts figuring okay. out in his career. So, and let's see what Gordo, what are you liking on the first fight of the card? Yeah, truth be told, if I had a fourth pass, I would probably use it here because I do think this fight could go a multitude of ways. I, I like Wheezy's stance on taking the over. I do think if it goes there, then this line will definitely look wide, and it's one where I don't think a money line side is in play. Um, but I'm going to do something that probably isn't the best flaw. It's going to be the, the common thinking here. And When I first saw this fight and I thought, okay, what is the matchup going to be? It's going to be Cody Garbrandt going into Power Striker. And, and the first instinct was that KO proper Figueredo. And as much as you know, I don't like getting into that, that, that square thinking that way, I think most times when I see this fight being played out, that's how I see this fight ending. And I do think that a knockout for Figueredo is most likely outcome. So on a fight I'd like to pass on, I will be taking the shot. Uh, I see plus 165, plus 175 on the Figgy KO. Um, I don't know if that book actually a real book on the KOs. Maybe 165 is a real one left. Um, but a, a shot that I'm going to go with here, um, not my favorite bet in the world, but my most likely outcome, the one I see happen more often, is the power shot of Figgy walking down Garbrandt and uh, doing exactly what Kai Car France did. All right, so I am using up my one of three passes for the first fight of the card. Weezy taking the fight goes the distance. Gordo taking the Figgy KO, and then Guru's taking the Figgy to win in rounds one or rounds two at plus 135. Uh, next thing, Marina Rodriguez looks scared at the face-offs. Maybe she saw the uh, the Jessica Andrade OnlyFans photos. I mean, that would terrify anybody. Um, over, under, 2.5 retirements. I'd say under, um, I think Holly Holm. 
could potentially retire, but outside of that, we you're talking about maybe maybe Sterling retiring. And I just had a funny feeling about it, man. I don't know where Aljo's at, you know. And um, I think with a lot of these guys, once you've lost the title, some of them they just don't care anymore, and they might just be like, you know what, I'm I'm leaving. Uh, but we'll see. That I might be way off on that. And then what about Jim Miller? Yeah, people are saying Jim, yeah. maybe Jim Miller. Jim Miller himself said absolutely not, but you know that could potentially change. Um, so we'll see. Uh, Keith liking the the finish for Figgy. Yeah, Figgy into the distance. Best price is plus one hundred on Bovada. Uh, did you see your boy Gary? Gary Copeland is certainly, certainly not my boy. Absolutely not. Um, I see Cody doing Plus the chicken 100. dance. Yeah. <laughs> who said that? Who said, who, said, who said that? Oh, okay. Um, inside the this, we'll talk about that fight. We'll talk about that fight. Um, all right, and let's see, Figgy KO 2 3 plus 480. Um, Cody Moneyline is the best bet. I know you're not. Oh, Cody Brundage or Cody uh, Garbrandt? Garbrandt, Garbrandt, okay. All right, <laughs> Ice Bath is knocking Cody out. I, I mean, I could see it. All right, guys, let's move on to. The next fight, we have um, Bobby Green going against Jim Miller. We have Bobby Green sitting at minus 177. Jim Miller sitting at plus 152. We'll start with our Uncle Wheezy once again. Uncle Wheezy, what are you liking for this banger of a fight? Yeah, I got a track bet, and I, and I like this Jim Miller finish only at plus 100. You know, So if the fight goes to decision, the bet is void. You get your money back. If there's a finish and Jim Miller's the one getting the finish, you cash. And if Jim Miller gets finished by Green, you lose. And Green has been historically more of a decision guy. He's uh, finished five of his 12 wins. Uh, but Jim Miller, since 2013, has finished 12 of 15 wins. So he's been finishing at a higher rate, and he also gets finished at a slightly lower rate in his losses. So, um, And plus, Miller is the far more dangerous submission grappler here. He, You know that he kind of forces a little bit of a brawl, and in those scrambles is where Jim is so dangerous in order to just get on your back and find your neck. And when he does that, his squeeze is great, and he will finish fights. And he's also throwing with a lot more reckless abandon on the feet. Also, Bobby Green coming off a serious knockout loss. So, uh, you know, maybe returning a little bit too soon. So, you know, the durability of Green could also potentially be a lot more in question than it was before the Jalen Turner fight. So at 50% implied probability, I think that Jim Miller uh, finish only probably plus 100 is a good look this week. Oh, gosh. UFC just looked up the Jessica Andrade OnlyFans. I should have put a, like a, a disclaimer across the screen. For the love of God, don't do that. Don't do that. Just absolutely don't do it. Uh, Fandel just the suspended the, the Figgy fight. Interesting. Um, I, I, it's not off. I don't know why they did that, though. Um, so, Weezy, you're taking the finish only. I'm also on the finish only as a track bet. I think at the very least it, it pushes. I think Bobby Green is live to win that decision. But I'm going to get a little more aggressive here. And I'm going to go with Jim Miller to win this fight in the first or second round at plus 360. And I think that's kind of how he does it. Uh, Jim Miller is obviously very dangerous. The last time he won a decision was like a very, very long time, maybe 2018 since the last time he won a decision. I don't think he's really winning one here. And I'm kind of worried about Bobby Green. I'm worried about the durability of Green. Green's been getting touched up lately. He's been getting hurt. He's been getting knocked out lately. And he just took like one of the worst knockout losses I've ever seen in my life. Um, Carrie Hatley, Weezy, any any word? Has Carrie Hatley been arrested and charged with attempted murder yet? <laughs> I was going to ask you the same thing because I was looking at my notes here, and I, I I've heard that there could be an investigation that they that the cops might be knocking on Carrie Hatley's door at any moment now um, for what he did to this poor man, Bobby Green. Even Bobby Green this week admitted that he was disappointed in the ref. <laughs> allowing him to take that much damage, you know? And, I mean, you're not going to hear fighters talk about that too often, you know? Uh, Bobby's yeah. a guy that tends to be a little bit uh, – he's got kind of a big mouth, you know? So, for him to admit that, yeah. Oh, God. Uh, Kerry Hatley might be going to prison, ladies and gentlemen. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm shocked he hasn't been convicted yet, but maybe they're they're still investigating it. But yeah, um, he took a ton of da- like that fight wasn't too long ago. So yeah, I'm a little worried about Bobby Green and Jim Miller. Of course, he doesn't have as much power as a Jalen Turner or a Drew Dober, but he does have some solid power as well. And Bobby Green with that hands down style, I could see Jim Miller hurting him. And if this fight was to hit the mat, Jim Miller's obviously very good on the ground as well. So uh, Jim Miller, uh, I like the finish only, but just getting a little more aggressive. You're taking Jim Miller to win this fight in rounds one or two at plus 360, which uh, that's typically when he wins a lot of his fights. Um, Gordo, what are you liking for this Bobby Green Jim Miller fight? Yeah, I'm with you guys. Uh, on our Wednesday show we do for DraftKings, we mentioned that finish only line. It's something that I brought up there. We brought up and talked about it, and we all see it the same way. I have a, per- a couple units on it personally. It's one where I'm not going to go on about it too long. You know, the truth is, the mo- the if this fight was to finish, I just think it's more often than not Jim Miller getting his hand raised. We have seen Bobby Green, uh, Bobby Green not take damage well recently. We have seen him knocked out. We've seen him dropped. And although Bobby Green can very much win a decision, I do think if a finish materializes, it's more often than on the Jim Miller side. All right, so taking the finish only with Wheezy there. Guru, uh, what do you like for this fight here? Honestly, I've, I'm with you guys. Maybe he's just the trendy dog of the week. Maybe it's just written in the stars. When it, won it, you won it UFC 100. You won it UFC 200. Got to get it done here at UFC 300. Um, I'm going to take Jim Miller inside the distance. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I think more often than not when he gets it done, he's going to get that finish, and I'm certainly going to be rooting for it. Uh, Bobby Green's durability is certainly a question at this point. Been knocked out in the last few of his fights, so uh, questionable. So let's go, Jim. Jim Miller inside the distance at plus 250. So it looks like we're all on the same page there. Hopefully Jim Miller can come through. And hopefully Kerry Hatley's not refing, refing this fight. You know, I think that would be – that could end up bad. Um, let's see here. He refed the power slap last night. I mean, they're That's still nice letting guy. him ref. Let alone There's no power. ref for that? Yeah, there, there is. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of fouls and, and the infractions. The best is when the guy gets knocked out, but it's a disqualification. So you win, but you're also concussed, so you can't move on in the tournament, so your opponent moves on anyway. Jeez. Is great. I have not watched Power Slap, but I have seen like some highlights and clips. There, There is a... There is a ref. It's funny seeing like Jason Herzog there, like refing a refing a power slap. Just really funny. It's funny. The best is watching Forrest Griffin like try to catch falling fighters and just not not catch yeah. at all. Slappers, I guess I should call terrible them man. Fighters. I saw a clip last night where somebody got knocked out and the spotters literally let his head hit the hit the ground. Yeah. Like <laughs> they're they're there for zero reason at all. <laughs> yeah, like like get some help and Kerry Hatley get get some help get some help. Um. Like in Bobby all day long. Yeah, Bobby can go out there and I, I think win a decision. I think that's definitely on the table there. Um, let's let's not let's not uh, say false things in the chat. That'd be terrible. That'd be terrible. Uh, Miller lost Alexander Hernandez by decision in 2023. Um, I don't trust him against solid fighters anymore. Yeah, that's fair. That's why I think Green is definitely capable of winning a decision. That's why I like that finish. I think that's why we all like that finish only. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next fight. And I'm looking forward to this fight. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of Jessica Andrade, a big fan of Jessica Andrade's style. And I think it's going to be a fun fight here. We got Jessica Andrade currently sitting as a minus 146 favorite. And we got Marina Rodriguez sitting as a plus 126 underdog. This fight opened up a pick Some money's been pouring in on Jessica Andrade the last week or so. We'll start with you, Guru. What are you liking for this strawweight fight? I actually like violence here, believe it or not. And I can get the under two and a half at plus money. Jessica Andrade, like, I don't know, maybe 10 of her last 12 fights have gone like the under two and a half. And even Marina Rodriguez, three of her last seven have gone under. So I, especially with 300K on the line, she shut down that OnlyFans. I'm sorry, Brady, I know you're upset, but <laughs> they the OnlyFans is shut down. So she's got to make that money somehow. So I think she's going to go out and try to get it finished. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at my my credit card statement, and it's like I got a, a, a refund. I'm like, oh, what, what what's this refund for? And I guess once they they cancel the account, you get you get a refund for the for the month or whatever. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's it sucks, but the pen, the images are permanently in my head, so you know, no worries there. Um, so yeah, it looks like the under two and a half rounds best price is I think this is a, a fake fake book. Uh, I'm not sure under. Two and a half, like plus one fifteen, and I'm gonna yeah. go with that that same thing. Um, I'm I am on the fight. Doesn't go to decision here. Beat a tad a line move a tad 
a bit of line movement there. And yeah, I think there's just multiple paths for this fight to finish. I think Jessica Andrade has two paths to finish. I think Andrade has a ton of power. We could see her knocking out Rodriguez like Amanda Lemos did. And she has a submission game as well. She's a black belt in BJJ. Offensive grappling is really good. Defensive grappling is not. But, you know, that doesn't really matter here. So Andraj is live for that knockout or sub. And I think Rodriguez is live for a finish as well. It wouldn't shock me in the slightest if Rodriguez finished Jessica Andraj. Like, Andraj is, you know, not durable. She's been finished nine times in her entire career, which is the most on any fighter on this card. So I like fight doesn't go. I'm going to give that under two and a half rounds plus 115. I think somebody's getting served here. I think these fighters are going to swing dicks until somebody falls. And I think it's going to come down to who has the bigger dick in this one. So give me the under at plus money. Um, Wheezy, what are you liking for Jessica Andrade versus Marina Rodriguez? Yeah. I mean, I'm with you guys in that. I think someone gets dick slapped here and I don't really care who it is. You know, um, if it's Marina, I'm fine with that. If it's Jessica, I'm fine with that. I don't have a money line side, but we were talking about it earlier this week, Brady, on probability that if you want to encapsulate 100% of both of these fighters finish conditions, whether it's in wins or losses in three round fights, you can just leave round three out of it because 14 of 29 combined three-round fights between Marina and Jessica have finished inside the distance. That's 48.28%. But all of those fights finished in rounds one or two. So if you take that fight doesn't go, say at about plus 100, right, or plus 110, thereabouts, you can get that up to what it looks like on Bovada right now for fight doesn't start round three, plus 185. That's a ridiculous line. Um, and that encapsulates both fighters finish conditions in wins and losses. And you can get a much better price, almost a uh, 12% better in implied probability. If you go down to fight, doesn't start round three for plus 185. And if you agree with everybody else on the panel, like me, that somebody gets dick slapped violently, you're going to get paid plus 185 instead of uh, plus 100. All right. Yeah. So, so far we're all liking violence. Gordo, are you on the violence train or, or are you not? Well, uh, unlike Brady, I, I'm going to do what I did when I heard about the Andrade only fan and pass. And uh, I think I'm going to stay away from this one. Uh, the, the, I just see a lot of outcomes happening here. I don't mind your spot on violence. I think for a good plus money number is it, the, is the right side here, but uh, I think there are better plays on the card and I'm going to pass on it. All right. So Gordo using up his first pass. He has two left. I have two left. Wheezy has three left. Guru has three left. Um, Aaron, like in the inside, the distance for this one, plus 100, got the same number for me. I'm, I'm looking for violence here. Top looking for the under Marina, uh, looking Marina KO. Yeah. Marina KO was, was big plus money last time I saw, I think that could be on the table. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. I gotta be careful. With some of these, these comments I pull up, <laughs> um, heart says that Jessica mind says Rodriguez. Yeah, I, I really got to be careful with some of these comments, man. Uh, Brady, would you be Jessica Andrade's wife? Would would I be his, her wife? What sense does that make, Dixon? I am a man. Um, no, I would <laughs> not. She? I would not. Uh, did he say swing Dixon? I don't believe so. Um, <laughs> let's see. Wish the fights would start sooner. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're going to be starting very soon. I'm looking forward to it. Let's see here. I'm, I'm getting violent. Um, I, hope the, I hope this card is violent. I think it will be violent. Um, let's see here. All right. Still hitting the, the like button because Carrie Hatley is not Carrie Hatley is not going to stop you from doing it. So you might as well do it and you might as well have fun doing it. Smash a like button. Uh, Brady, I'm a man. I, I am. Believe it or not. Uh, con, uh, I'm pushing I'm, I'm 40 too. Yep. I'm a man who's pushing 40 and in betting years, I'm pushing in, in betting years. I'm 60. In betting years, I'm 60, but I, I'm actually in, in my 20s, believe it or not. Listen, you you were not at UFC Atlantic City watching Gary Copeland ruin everybody's oh. lives. While, listen oh. to this, since Boardwalk Hall is built in 1927, there was zero Wi-Fi. No texting, no live betting, nothing. And I had no idea until we got there. So I would have been pissed. Wow. Because yeah. I would already been I would have already been pissed with the judges and the refing, but yeah, there was no no uh no service. Oh my gosh, it sounds exactly. like a, a well, I'm 900 years old now. Yeah. And have AIDS. Surprised you're not a thousand. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, why does everybody think I'm in 30s and 40s, guys? I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's all the you know, maybe it's betting on like Gina Mazzani at, at chalk. 
I'm telling you, man, when it went after after that Gadinez fight, we were all really concerned about you. I was concerned as well. I was very concerned. <laughs> but um, let's move on to the next fight. And this is one of my favorite prelims on the card. We have Jalen Turner going against Huynato Moicano. We got Jaylen, Jalen Turner sitting at minus 232. Moicano is sitting at plus 197. We'll start with you. Gordo, what are you liking for this fight here? Yeah, I think it's a super fun one. And I think it, it comes down to gun to my head. I think Jalen Turner has the size, the reach, the power advantage to go out there and win the fight. But when it comes down to betting, I, I do think this line's gotten a little out of hand. And it's one where I think there might be value on the underdog here. We have seen Moicano, you know, 300 cap for grab money. Moicano wants it. There's no doubt about that. And it seems to be not only a super fun match for him to go out there and do that, but one where he showed that he will grapple consistently shall he he need to last time and, and it's one where we've seen jalen turner has back taken by um dan hooker uh grapple by purple and all that kind of stuff and i do think that having renato moicano submission at plus 400 is a bit wide and that is where i'm going to go in this matchup here now do i think it happens all the time no but i do think that it happens more times than plus 400 indicates i do think it's a good line for someone in moicano who will look to take it to the ground who is the more well-versed grappler and uh, someone who is very dangerous shall it get to the back and, and i do think that is a, a path here turner very dangerous has that round one power equity but a one where i'm taking the shot in the submission here all right, um, so I am going to be on the other side here. I, I do like Turner quite a bit in this matchup. I think it's a tough one for Moicano. Uh, obviously, if Moicano does get this fight down to the mat, I think that sub is going to be super live. It's just I, I kind of see him struggling to do so. You know, Jalen Turner much bigger, and Turner has really good takedown defense as well. So I, I kind of think Turner keeps this fight standing, and, and when it is standing, I really worry about Moicano in this fight. We've seen Moicano hurt on multiple occasions. We've seen him knocked out on multiple occasions and he's taken on Jalen Turner who just has the death touch this guy hits very hard he's dangerous wherever the fight goes so I'm liking Turner here um, he's minus 232 on the money line and his inside the distance is minus 170 but what I like is that round one round two for Turner at minus 118 um, because all of his wins come in the first or second round when he's finishing fights it's early and I think if this fight does get into the third round late it probably means that Moicano was able to get takedowns um, and get some control because I just don't see Moicano lasting 10 minutes on the feet with a guy as dangerous as uh, Jalen Turner. So I'm going Turner to finish the fight uh, round one or round two. No method, just in the first or second round at minus 118. Guru, what are you liking for this fight here? I really, really love this fight. I think this is an unbelievably exciting fight. Um, I think the way that everybody sees it happening is basically how it'll probably happen, right? More, uh Turner round one, round two is exactly where he usually gets it done. He's devastating. Uh, Moicano has not only shown durability issues, but he's also shown fight IQ mistakes. So uh, Turner absolutely can get it done early. And we also know that he's huge and has a massive weight cut. And if Moicano puts it on him, maybe Turner's uh, takedown defense doesn't hold and he gets tired and maybe Moicano pulls it out in the end, right? So because of that, it's kind of baked into the line. And I was basically, I literally have it written in my notes. I have two plays. Brady, I was literally going to play your play. And I was also considering getting crazy with the fight ending by sub at plus 280. But ultimately, I think I'm just going to pass because, I, I, like I said, I think it's uh, all cooked in right there, kind of priced out. All cooked in. It's all cooked up. Uh, so, yeah, Guru passing. Guru, you have two passes left. Gordo, you have two passes left. I have two passes left. Wheezy, you have three passes left. Are you using up your first pass or is there something sticking out to you on this fight here? Yeah, hell no, not on this fight, man. I am not passing on this one. This is one of the best fights on the card. I love this UFC 300 card because the Turner Moicano and Yusuf Lopez mat matchmaking is just absolutely phenomenal. You know, uh, two prospects in both fights, you know, like in that they're both on their way up, you know, whether it's Yusuf and Lopez or Turner and Moicano, they're both hot right now. They're both, you know, uh, winning uh impressively when they do win so i'm really looking forward to this one and i'm gonna have some fun on this one and go with jalen turner by submission at plus 850 on uh bet rivers sports book this is one we talked about as well uh, on probability brady it's it's ridiculously underpriced considering that moicano has been subbed in one of his three three round losses and that three of seven Jalen Turner wins in the UFC or by submission. The club and sub is absolutely live because what happens is when Jalen Turner hits you, you forget that you're not a wrestler and you just like, all right, let's screw boxing with this dude. I'm shooting in. And then he can use those ridiculously long limbs 
to find submissions that other people that are five foot ten can't. So I'm looking to have some fun. I've got this as a track bet for a quarter unit. Um, I think it's one that you can try to swing and hit a home run by by taking just a little bit of a small bet. But I'm putting it all on uh, Turner by Sub plus eight fifty Bet River Sportsbook. Let's go. All right, that is the biggest odds prop given out thus far on the show. And yeah, we talked about it a little bit, Weezy, this week. Like the, the club and sub could certainly be there. Like Jalen Turner lands a big shot. Moicano shoots in for a takedown. And Jalen Turner has a good submission, really good submission game. He's a black belt in BJJ, has those really long arms. So yeah, I think the sub is, is in play. That's why I kind of play just the round one, round two instead of the round one, round two KO. Um, yeah, Jalen Turner is you. I mean, this is a guy that's six foot three at, at lightweight. Um, you know, it doesn't, it makes no sense. Let's see. Yeah. Bovada has some like crazy special props. I need to check out Bovada. Um, I got to check some of those out. Moicano is not on Turner's level. He, 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 he needs to get it to the mat though. If he gets it to the mat, then he's very live to win. Um, let's see. Moicano does want money. That is, that is true. Moicano does want money and yeah, I'm sure he wants that 300 K. That's for sure. Jalen Turner by KO. Don't let Kerry Hatley Near the cage, yeah, if uh, Kerry Hatley's in there, I'm really concerned for the safety of one Hoinata Moicano. Uh, Turn it to win in rounds one or rounds two. I like it. I'm on it. Um, fight won't start round three is something I also like, minus 200. I think that's solid as well. Yeah. But I'm going I'm going Turner here, uh, the tarantula, yes, sir. All right, guys, we just hit 1,000 people watching between Twitter and YouTube. Appreciate you all hanging out. Again, if you guys could smash a like button, let's get these likes up. I try to connect it to Instagram uh, today as well, but uh, couldn't couldn't do that. So uh, if you're watching from Twitter, what's up? If you're watching from YouTube, what's up? And what is up to Clint? Yes. Who I, I want to give a special shout out to because Clint has thousands and thousands of dollars on <laughs> Jamal Hill. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, if Clint hits this bet, if Clint hits this bet, I forget the exact amount, but it's it's thousands um, on Jamal Hill. So we'll see. Wishing you the best of luck, Clint. All right, guys, let's move on to the next fight. I'm really looking forward to this fight. I mean, we got Diego Lopez going against Sadiq Yusuf. It does not get much better than this. We got Diego Lopez sitting at minus 139. Uh, uh, Sadiq Yusuf sitting at plus 119. We'll start with Gordo. What are you liking for this fight here? Yeah, I think this fight is super, super fun, man. And if you were to tell me that Diego Lopez goes out there, put on another uh, show stopping performance i wouldn't be too surprised but i think when it comes down to betting pre-flop here it is going to be the Sadiq yusuf yusuf side for me i think not only has he fought the battle of competition but i think he's the better minute winner in this spot and although diego lopez is super explosive is able to finish this fight at any time it's hard to quantify that when it turns into minute winning ability i mean there was a reason he was uh, even even with gavin tucker there's a reason he was dog sabatini it's because the guy has the ability to end the fight at any time but can be stuck in bottom position, can be hit on the feet, is not the best striker in general, and just doesn't win minutes. So when it comes down to the overall boxing exchanges, uh, I do think Sidiq Yusuf is able to stay safe on the mat, win the exchange on the feet, and win the minutes overall. And although it'll be a very, very dicey bet, I just think Sidiq Yusuf is the, the better minute winner who has fought a better level of competition, who I don't think should be an underdog in this spot. I'll take him at plus 125, and I'll be sweating because I know Lopez is dangerous, but I do think Yusuf has more goods to get it done. All right, Gordo taking the dog shot on the Sadiq Yusuf money line. Four thousand dollars on Jamal Hill, and I saw that Drake has six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars on Alex Pereira. So the Drake curse is in full effect. If you guys have bet on Alex Pereira, you're, you're probably screwed because you know Drake. The Drake curse is is absolutely real. Um, so yeah, for me, I'm like an I'm like in violence here. I'm like in violence on a lot of fights on this car, but but this is certainly one of them. And this is one that um, me and Weezy talked about a little bit on our show on, on probability. And um, I was looking at the fight won't start round two, but I'm going to go with the under one and a half rounds here. The reason being is Lopez, uh, both of his wins have finished in the first round, actually, like the first minute and a half of the fight. And then even like Sodiq Yusuf has like, I think, three or four first round knockout wins. Um, had that submission win as well against Don uh, Shameless Shanus as well, and he even was close to knocking out Edson Barbosa. So I kind of think this is going to be a firefight. Um, I think Lopez is live for either a knockout or a sub, and then I also think Yusuf is is definitely live to knock out Diego Lopez. Like Lopez has been knocked out twice; he's very hittable, and Sudik does have power. So I think we get a one round banger here. I think somebody's getting served. Give me the under one and a half rounds at. Let's go with plus one. 40 plus 140 on the under one and a half. We'll go with that. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Wheezy, what are you liking for this fight here? Yeah, you know, we talked about fight doesn't start round two on um, on 
uh, probability at plus 230, but that line kind of got away and it moved uh, to much worse of a price on the books that I had it available on. So I just decided to go. I'm going with Gordo here, the um, the Yusuf money line at plus 120. I just think he's got more ways to win this fight. You know, I think like uh, like uh, Gordo said, I think he can win the minutes because Lopez doesn't have takedown defense and will play BJJ off his back. We saw that in the Brito fight. And I think that Sadiq's going to be the much better striker here. And his leg kicks are nasty. So I really do think that he can um, really upset Lopez's ability to be able to strike effectively after he lands a couple of those leg kicks. And Diego Lopez can't be counted on to wrestle. If Lopez gets hurt and he tries to wrestle Yusuf, I think he's just going to get thrown into the fence, to be honest with you. I don't think he's taken down Sadiq Yusuf, so I like the money line here at plus money. I think Yusuf's the better all-around fighter, and I think he's going to get the job done. All right, we got two people on the dog, Gordo and Wheezy. I'm on some violence. Uh, Guru, what are you on for this fight here? Muted. Yeah, you listen, you guys make unbelievable points, and it's it's honestly, it's, again, something I've been considering, but I'm still going to stick with, with Diego here. I do like his size. Um, I generally speaking, like Sadiq Yusuf has been rocked in, in previous fights as well, right? We've seen him dropped and hurt before. So I just feel like it's a, it's a time coming. And when you see somebody like Diego Lopes, who, who, who's just come forward at, at, a, at a crazy pace, sometimes you don't even need a takedown, right? You just kind of slip on a banana peel. You make it happen. He's a guy that under bright lights just seems to continue to make it happen. He's got 10 career wins, uh, finishes in the first round, uh, 20 finishes overall. So I'm going to go uh, Diego Lopez, round one, round two at uh, plus 165, or unless you got something better. Plus 165 works works for me. So we got Guru on the Lopez one, two, uh, Gordo on the use of money line, Wheezy on the use of money line, and I'm taking the under one and a half rounds looking for some early violence here. I cannot wait for this fight. This fight's amazing. Diego Lopez has a ton of hype. But uh, Sadiq Yusuf is definitely no pushover, and he's and he's plus money, so we'll see. Let's see what we got in the chat here. Uh, a lot of talk about Drake. Apparently, Drake did hit a bet against Sean O'Malley, but prior to that, I mean, that guy uh, was on a you know quite the skid. Um, we got Lou in the chat. Brady, how many German energy drinks did you and the panel have for this card? Zero, because I would never ever drink a German energy drink like you did the, the one the one time. Uh, Weezy's drinking some water. Um, Gordo, what are you what are you drinking on? Some some coffee and Bailey's this morning. Still, I'm still still left over, even though it's three fifty. But well, it's still left over. Some coffee, okay. Guru, how about you? What are, what are you drinking? I'm drinking a Miller Lot. I cold. I actually need to go grab a fresh one. To be quite honest, there you go. You. I'm drinking uh, some, some vitamin C so I don't get sick again. I, I hate getting sick. I'm trying to vitamin C up, and then also a, a Celsius heat um, for some energy as well. So I'm um, trying to trying to stay stay healthy. Because I was just coming off of being very, very sick. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Um, oh my gosh, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with some people, man? Uh, getting ready for tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready as well. Is uh, is that a Jim Miller? Or is it just a regular Miller, uh, Guru? Oh, it's a Jim Miller today. The Jim Miller. Okay. okay. For sure. <laughs> you know, from, from New Jersey here. Got to rep. Got to rep New Jersey zone. Yeah. Um, I don't think people are sleeping on like he's a favorite against a very good fighter, and I don't think you know many people are sleeping on him. And uh, yeah, Celsius is is the way to go. Probably going to uh, kill me with the amount of uh, Celsius as I do drink per day, but you know I, I say it's worth it. You know, get your caffeine in. All right, we'll move on to the next fight. Speaking of Holly Holm, we got Kayla Harrison going against Holly Holm. Kayla Harrison, one of the biggest favorites on the card at minus four fifty five. Holly Holm sitting as a plus 355 favorite. And I say we start with our Uncle Wheezy. Uncle Wheezy, what are you liking for this Harrison Holm matchup? And by the way, Harrison, she made weight. She did it. She looked pretty decent doing so. Um, And then at ceremonials, I thought she looked really good. So I think Harrison's coming in here ready to go. Wheezy, what are your thoughts on this matchup? And what do you like for your best bet? Yeah, I, I said earlier in the week that pre-flop, pre-weigh-in, that Holly was the side. But now, you know, Kayla showed up, made weight, looked good. I mean, not not great. She looked like she had a rough morning when she was on the scale. But she made weight. She did what a professional is supposed to do. 
made weight for the biggest fight of her life, a UFC 300 uh, debut in this in this promotion. So this is a huge fight for Kayla. I think she's going to show out. I grew up doing judo. Kayla Harrison's a two-time judo gold medalist in the Olympics. How can I not pick Kayla to get this fight to the ground and just maul the 42-year-old Holly Holm? I think she's going to finish her inside the distance. So I'm going Kayla inside the distance plus 133. That's available on Bet Rivers Sportsbook. And yeah, I'm going with the, the same thing. Um, early on in the week, I, I kind of was maybe thinking over um, in this fight, but the more I thought about it, and especially after seeing Harrison at uh, at weigh-ins and ceremonials be able to make the weight, and um, I think she probably does go out there and destroy Holly Holm. You know, I think she's going to get her to the mat, and and it could be knockout, it could be submission, and if this does go to decision, I just think it's going to be just a brutal, dominant decision across 15 rounds. But I think the finish is certainly live, and it's it's decent plus money, plus 133. She's a minus 455 favorite. I think she gets Holly Holm out of there. Holly Holm, like you said, Weezy, you know, 42 years old, which is what a lot of people think I am. A lot of people think I'm 42. Um, and <laughs> she hasn't really looked great as of late. Like, she looked horrible in that Ketlin Vera fight. I thought she might have won. She still looked horrible. She got submitted by Mara Bueno Silva. Just hasn't looked great as of late, and you know it's she's only getting older, and she's taking on Kayla Harrison, who quite frankly is is probably going to be champion in the very near future. If she beats Holly Holm, she probably goes on to face Raquel Pennington, and and Pennington's not stopping Kayla Harrison, I don't think. So yeah, give me give me Kayla Harrison here, and I think sh she makes this look very dominant. Another spot I was kind of looking at was the Harrison uh, point spread minus three point five, just because I think it's going to be so dominant. You know, even if it does go to decision, I think she can cover that point spread, but I think the finish is live. Um, but I'm liking that plus money for the finish as well. So right there with you, Weezy. Um, inside the distance, plus 133 for one, Kayla Harrison. Gordo, what are you liking for this fight here? I'm glad you brought up that point spread because that's something I, I've bet personally myself, but not something giving out here. I know you guys hit on a lot of the good points. Um, truth be told, I don't have any one like massive bets on like massive plus money numbers. So we're going to make sure we get some like medium plus money numbers. You know, instead of taking the inside of the distance, just give me the KO prop at plus 350. We finally get to see Kayla Harrison use elbows. We finally get to see her go out there. And I do think she's able to establish top position and rain down some damage on a 42 year old Holly Holm. I mean, they're not bringing in Holly Holm to derail Harrison. They finally got Harrison in the UFC. They want to see her <laughs> succeed. She is someone who they can bring in to have uh, some good success here. And I, I do think that a 42 year old Holly Holm who has preferred to fight in the clinch recently is not a very good recipe to beat someone as big and physical as Kayla Harrison. I think Kayla Harrison and gets her down, utilizes elbows, get the ground a pound finish, plus 350. All right. Uh, Gordo taking the Harrison KO, big plus money at plus 350. Guru, what are you liking for this fight here? I'm not all muted. Right. So, oh, there you go. Uh, it's so you're tough good. to remember whether I'm muted or not. Um, all right, I think you're <laughs> cut off the Millers, man. No. <laughs> no, more, no more oh, we just get, we're just getting started. You, you're crazy for that one. No way. Um, so here's the thing. I, I'm not sold that Kayla Harrison's getting a finish. Like, yes, Holly Holm made a mistake against the cage and got ninja choked by Mara Borna Silva. But generally speaking, she's really difficult to finish. Took to Misha Tate till round five to get that submission. And then you get knocked out in round one by Amanda Nunes. Like, all right, we, that's cool. We can give you a pass on that one. When you look at Kayla Harrison's last fight, she goes to decision with Aspen Ladd, and Aspen Ladd looked terrible. She goes to decision with Larissa Pacheco in a fight that she looked terrible in. And then you go to decision with um, – she goes to decision with uh, – what's her name? Uh, Marina Mokitani, who is uh, Sergey Spivak's girlfriend. Oh, So God. you're, you're wait, going to wait, decision – Wait, 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 wait. Sergey Spivak has a girlfriend? Yeah. She's the mother of his child. Yeah, I believe so. He's a vampire. He has a kid. Yeah, I know. They're, they're, they're Vampires serious. can reproduce. I did a lot not of people know. People don't that. know that. I did not know that. Okay. Have you not yeah, seen? I mean, they're all over Moldova, ladies and gentlemen. That's not a conspiracy theory. You know, they're all. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah, no, they're, 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 they're all over the place over there. That caught That's me. That's Transylvania. Oh, okay. No. Absolutely. So, generally speaking, she's actually been going the distance, and that was a really brutal weight cut. Yes, she made it. I knew she was going to make it, but like. I mean, she didn't look happy. So if you don't finish Holly Holm early with these elbows, I think the fight just drags out. And uh, I'm very happy to take uh, women's MMA at Pickham to go the distance. 
So the fight goes, the distance is like minus 105? Sure. All right, minus 105 for the inside the distance. Gordo taking the Harrison KO, me and Weezy taking the Harrison inside the distance at plus 133. And yeah, sorry, I'm still caught off guard that, you know, Sergey Spivak, I guess Sergey Spivak does well with the ladies. Um, somebody said in the chat. So, and the vampires can have girlfriend. I didn't know, I'm not uh, a vampire expert, but Weezy, you seem to be knowledgeable in the, the vampire field. Yeah, us Greeks, we have we have a connection with the past, and we know that they're real, you know. And plus, I mean, Romania is just a little bit north of uh, of Greece, you know. Transylvania's up there. There's a reason why they set those vampire books in Transylvania. There was a lot yeah. of blood drinking going on up there. Yeah, Weezy, yeah. I thought I saw Vampire Diaries on that bookshelf back there. So you must have. Uh, no, it's not actually. Back I there. know this is this is a, every, this every, is a record every, shelf, every, man. It's every, every season of Vampire Diaries, huh? <laughs> With the with the with the extended footage and everything <laughs> behind the scenes. Oh, great stuff! Shout out to Sergey Spivak. Hopefully, we see him back soon. Um, but um, he has to fight at at nighttime, not not the daytime. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's so true. That, that that gone fight, I think, was maybe during the day. Maybe that's why he looks so bad, you know, fighting during the day. All right, guys. Appreciate you all hanging out. If you guys have not already, smash the like button. We're getting to the next fight, which is Aljamain Sterling going against Calvin Cater. And, uh, yeah, for me, there are some spots I do like on this fight. But I got to... I got to pass on something. I think I'm going to pass on this fight. This is a dog or pass spot for me. I think the, the Calvin Cater money line is very interesting. I think if he can stuff takedowns here, he might look like the favorite. I like the power. I like the boxing, the volume that he brings to the table. But there are some other spots I like a little bit later down the cards. So I'll be passing on this fight, but I was looking at Cater money line. I was looking at Cater by knockout. I was looking at like the under. And if you're on Sterling, Sterling sub is interesting. So just a lot of spots sticking out. But I'm gonna I'm gonna sit back and, and pass on this one at least for the show. But I I, uh, I did take a, a small bet on that Cater money line personally. So um, yeah, passing on it for the show. But I do like Cater Wheezy. What do you like for this fight? Uh, I'm gonna give you the Cater money line here at plus one forty five. I just don't. I think that line's a little bit off. I think there's some questions about how Aljo is gonna perform up a weight class at one forty five. Um, I think that Cater is the better striker. He's shown great footwork and elusiveness and the ability to be able to stop takedowns. 95% of this dude's cage time in the UFC has been spent at distance striking range. If that trend continues, I don't think Calvin Cater looks plus 140. I'll tell you that. I think he probably looks maybe minus 150 to minus 200. So at plus 145, this is, these are the kind of spots I'm looking to attack this week because you got all good fighters. So I think this is a week where you can – Find some plus money spots that are underpriced. Attack those. And if you get in on enough of them, you should be able to win some coin flips and come out plus money this week. And I think this is a great spot to do exactly that. Going with the Cater money line at plus 145. All right. Cater money line for Wheezy. Uh, the object of disrespect is outrageous. This, I mean, his money line has been getting smashed. Like people are on uh, Aljamain Sterling. I think he's, you know, definitely not getting disrespected, at least according to the uh, the betting lines, because it's been nothing but Sterling love, at least on on the money line. Uh, let's see, Guru, what are you liking for this fight here? This fight is honestly fantastic. Uh, when it got announced, I, I'm always been a huge Calvin Cater fan. Uh, loved watching him knock out Jeremy Stevens with an elbow. That was sweet. Um, watched him. He should have got those more rounds versus Zabit and should have should have beat the shit out of Zabit. He was pulling away yeah. in that fight. But um yeah, I've always been a uh, I'm not I haven't been a fan of Aljo. He's cost me a ton of money. Um a lot. Like <laughs> versus Jan twice versus Cejudo. Um finally I got him back with Sean O'Malley. But I feel like they're giving him a fairly soft landing here. Calvin Cater has been like off for a really long time because of the ACL tear. He's, he's as old as Aljamain Sterling as well. Um, I do think Aljo's style works best when he's has a size advantage, which he obviously doesn't have here. And I know everybody's drawing to Calvin Cater's fantastic takedown defense, which is very good. Um, I just feel like a, he hasn't fought a grappler of this level and B Aljo probably doesn't even need the takedowns, which is what like TB is telling me in the back of my head. Shout out my co-host TB. It's like in the back of my head, he's like, 
Aljo can just take the back. Like he can just all he has to do is get in on the single, get in on the hips. He doesn't even need the takedown, and he just monkeys to the back. So it's like, does will the takedown defense even freaking matter? Um, so I'm just gonna pass. But god damn, am I excited for this fight? Nothing would make me happier than watching the Boston finisher knock out Aljo and watch him go back to you know selling houses and stuff. He's a realtor now, is that right? The, yeah, he's he's literally working with Raging Al. Like yeah. Oh, yeah. Realtors yeah. tend to do. Yeah, really listen, shout out to. Too. I don't know. I don't have anything personal about. I feel like he's actually probably a nice guy, but I just like didn't. Just cost me a lot of money, I guess, and I don't know. All right, so uh, a little Guru, a little corny. No, uh, Guru passing. Wheezy is taking the cater money line. I'm passing on this one. I think there's better spots on the card. Gordo, what are you doing for this fight here? Yeah, I actually have a bet on Calvin Cater, but the more I think about it, the more I realize that on a best bet show like this, I got some ground to cover in the standings. I'm going to pass on this one. I hope there's some better spots down the line. All right, so three passes um, yeah. on, on, on this fight. Very, very interesting. It looks like, Gordo, you have one pass left. I have yeah. one pass left. Wheezy, I think he has three passes. I don't think he's passed yet. Wow, okay. Weezy has three passes left, and Guru has one pass left. So Weezy, uh, keeping the keeping the passes for later. Let's see what we have in the chat here. Um, Mandy, remind remind us at the end of the show, and we will. Let's see here. Um, taking Aljo by decision is the fight goes the distance a good bet? Um, I think it probably does go the distance, but I could see scenarios where this does this does finish, you know, with an Aljo sub or or Cater knockout. Uh, let's see what we got here. Cater KO or decision agreed, but I think that's like the same exact price as the the money line is the thing. And what are your guys' thoughts? I didn't I still haven't seen the the picture or video or whatever. Any thoughts on this? Is that me seeing it? Elbow? Elbow? Yeah, from I what I think I saw, it was literally just a cut, and it's just kind. Of, it was literally just a scab. Okay, I, I, I still haven't seen it, but a lot of people are are talking about it. All right, so we got that. Let's move on to the featured prelim of UFC 300, and what a featured prelim this is. We got Alexander Rakic going against Yuri Prohashka. and I'm gonna kick it to Weezy because I know Weezy is. Uh, this might be his ass shape. I'm not sure though. Yeah, Yuri Prohaska is Uncle Weezy's ass shaving of the week. And wow. it was a really hard, yeah, it was a really hard week to pick one, you know, because like I say, this is a top notch card. And I never pick women because every time I pick a woman, it's the wrong one and they let me down constantly. And like uh, I always tell Brady, it's never my fault. It's always yeah. the fighter's fault when I lose. And then I take the glory when I win. That's the only fair way to do it. But um, for, for this one, um, I just I, I feel as if Jerry in this new um, judging criteria or we're, we're throwing out control time. What's all of it? Unless you're doing big damage on top. Um, I think Jerry's going to be landing the bigger minutes on the feet here. I think he's going to stuff a lot of the takedown attempts of Alexander Rakic, who's only completing takedowns at a 25 percent clip. I think Rakic's ability to be able to uh, um, control his opponents on the ground is a little bit overstated due to the fact that he fought Anthony Smith. So I think if you throw out that fight, you're going to find that this guy's wrestling is, eh, it's okay, you know, I, but I don't think that he's going to be able to win a ton of minutes convincingly on the ground against Jerry, and I think Jerry will be landing the bigger shots on the feet. He's a much more dynamic, unorthodox striker. Um, I mean, I think when you're putting together a fight like this for a UFC 300 card, you're taking into consideration one of these guys – has star star power and the other one doesn't and i don't need to tell you which one is which so i think jerry prochaska's money line at plus 100 is a bit of a gift all right Weezy taking the yiri money line at plus 100 um guru what do you like for this fight here i'm so so shocked and excited to hear that the, the ass shaving of the week is jerry because i'm on jerry for two units as well but what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go one step further because it is a prop show and I'm definitely behind. Uh, I'm going to go with Jiri round one, round two at plus 210. I believe Jiri's only won one decision. So I, I think he's got to hurt this guy bad. And if you watch, 
uh, Alexander Rakic fight the uh, fight Devin Clark, you go, oh my goodness, that's that's very that's very very troubling. So I think you make a lot of good points with the wrestling. Uh, I think he took a really long time off with the knee injury. So I think this is a really tough fight to come back from. I mean, this is a reoccurring theme here that you've got fighters coming back from very serious injuries and it's their first fight. And let's be honest, Jiri already did that. Jiri already had the serious injury, had the surgery, came back and had a really tough opponent in his first fight. And guess what happened? He didn't win. So taking him this time, redemption for the samurai. All right, round one, round two at, you said, plus 210? Yes, sir. All right, and yeah, that was a good point you made about Rackage getting hurt by by Devin Clark, um, the brown bear, which is probably the least dangerous brown bear ever. I mean, that's he's just not dangerous at all, so that wasn't a good look. For me, I really like like violence in this matchup, and it's, you know, all I have to say is it's a Yuri Prohoshka fight. This is a guy that has 34 fights. 30 of those 34 have went under two and a half rounds and we're getting the under two and a half at minus 155. Um, I like that quite a bit. Yuri, a 97% finish rate and Alexander Rakic has some finishing ability as well. You know, Yuri has four losses, all four of those coming inside the distance. So just getting a Yuri under at, at minus 155 is something I do like this week. Um, Yuri's going to go out there and, and these two hate each other. You know, these two really hate each other. Apparently Rakic said that Yuri was a fake samurai and, and Yuri's pissed off. So I think we're going to get a pissed off Yuri. I think it's going to lead to a fun and exciting fight. And I think somebody's getting served here. Give me the under two and a half at minus 155. Gordo, what are you liking for this fight? Yeah, funny story about it too. As I woke up this morning, I got a nice little invite to uh, do an appearance and give out one of my favorite bets on the card this morning by uh, Evan over there at Fight Numbers. And I'm like, okay, what should be the one bet I give out? I can't talk about Holloway. You know, I, I, I'm wearing the merch. I, I talk about him too much. What is a play that not many people will like? Well, I gave out the under in the Jiri Rockage fight. And then Brady comes on five seconds after me and goes, Gordo stole my play. So it looks like me and Brady align on that one here. And he hit all the nail, all the nails on the head there. I like violence in this matchup. A lot of the time, I don't really like betting Rockage unders because he's a guy who's willing to point fight, but Jerry's not going to allow that. Jerry's going to go forward. He's going to go for the reckless abandon. Either he is going to clip Rockage with pressure and power or he can be caught in his own right. Rocket, uh, Jiri is very sloppy, and I do think Rockage has the ability to counter him. I don't really want to pick a side for that matter. Uh, I just really want to go out there and pick violence. I do think Jiri's going to bring it, and I do think that um, you know when you got a real ninja samurai warrior or whatever he is in front of you, uh, you take violence every time because it's going to be a not so pretty one. So um, give me the under here. I'm with you as well. Minus 155, under two and a half. I, I like that there. All right, so I'm taking the under. Gordo taking the under. Wheezy looking for an ass shaving. Um, and then Guru is taking Yuri round one, round two at plus two ten. Cannot wait for this fight. It's a great featured prelim. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Rakic's toughest opponent is Anthony Smith. That is not true, but uh, Rakic by dominant decision. I don't know. I don't for Rakic to win a decision. He's either going to have to grapple with. I'm with Weezy. I don't think he's going to be able to grapple Yuri or um, he's going to you know be more active than Yuri. I don't see that as well. I don't he, see a Rakic he, decision. He wrestles with Vadim Nemkov and it's a 10 minute round and Vadim Nemkov quits after the 10 minute round because of uh, Jiri's scrambles. Like you're, you're underestimating Jiri's ground game. If you just think that if Rakic is just going to lay and pray on top of him, that's yeah. just not an option here. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, is Yuri Brahashka is not Anthony Smith. I can, I can guarantee you that. I can absolutely guarantee you that. Uh, Yuri round two, round three, plus four, ten. Yuri to win in the under two and a half, plus two twenty one to kind of with Guru Ooh, there. That one two like getting the, the two and a half. Yeah, it is. Um, Jan Bita. I'm not sure. I forget where he's from, but he has a, a really great book where he's able to be just a ton of great, great line movement there. Um, a racket decision. I hope not. Um, we got the dog father who thinks I'm in a sauna. I have a sauna, but I'm not in it right now. This is just a wall the dog father just, just, wait just is wall. is that true it, i can jerry under and on un, jerry and under two and a half plus no oh, he said he beat line movement oh he's he from the, line the, the czech oh, republic okay. they get great oh, line over there apparently that's amazing yeah young okay, gets i was about to say get that. yeah <laughs> Um, let's see here. Hatless Brady was plus 500. Not true. I mean, if you guys have been paying attention, I said that for UFC 300, the hat is coming off. The hat is coming off. Um, this will look like racket. Diago's no, it's not. I mean, nothing happened in that fight. You think Yuri's gonna go out there and just just do nothing like Tiago Santos? I, I don't see it. Yuri's a madman, Yuri's crazy. Um, Yuri's mentally ill. I think we're going to get a very fun fight in this one. <laughs> 
Um, and by the way, I don't know. Did you guys see the video? Um, yes. I, Yuri yeah. was in Las Vegas. I, I don't know what he was doing, but standing Yuri, outside the arena. <laughs> what, was he, what was he doing in that video? Because I saw it, I didn't get to see it. Uh, it's good. I, he he's just standing outside the arena, basically like I, I don't know. There's nobody out there on the strip, and he's just I mean staring at the uh, the T-Mobile Arena with the big screen, and he's just I assume just visualizing everything. But he, I mean, he was out there by himself, I guess, for a while. Wow. Yeah, this guy, Yuri, is uh there's not a lot of guys out there. Not a lot of guys out there like Yuri. He's different. He's different. It, it's a, it's gonna be a fun fight. Uh, you know, Rakic, his last four fights have sucked, but I think this fight's gonna be fun. All right, so what we're going to do now is go over our prelim bets, make sure we have everything good and uh do a quick recap for everybody watching. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna kick us off. I'm passing on the figgy fight. I'm taking Miller to win in rounds one or rounds two plus three sixty. Taking on Draj under two and a half rounds plus one fifteen. Turner one two minus one eighteen. Lopez under one and a half plus one forty. Harrison ITD plus one thirty three. Passing on the Cater fight, and I'm taking the Yuri under two and a half at minus one fifty five. I have one pass left. Uh, Wheezy, you are taking the Figgy fight goes to decision plus one fifty five. The Jim Miller finish only plus one hundred. Andraj fight won't start round three plus one eighty five. Turner sub plus eight fifty. Yusuf money line plus one twenty five. Harrison ITD plus one thirty three. Cater money line plus 145 and the year money line plus 100. Wheezy, does all that look right? Yes, it does. All right. We got Gordo. You're taking Figgy KO to kick off the card plus 175. The Miller finish only as well plus 100. Passing on the Andrage fight, you're taking Moicano sub plus 400. Use of money line plus 125. Harrison KO plus 350. Passing on the Cater fight, and you're also taking the year under at minus 155. Gordo, does all that look correct? Yes, sir. And then lastly, we got Guru taking uh, Figgy, round one, round two, plus 135. Miller, ITD, plus 250. Andrage, under two and a half, plus 115. Passing on the Turner fight, you're taking the Lopez, one, two, plus 165. Harrison fight goes the distance, minus 105. Passing on Sterling, and then taking Yuri, one, two, at plus 210. Does that look correct? Yes, sir. All right, there we have it. Uh, Guru, you have one pass left. Gordo, you have one pass left. Wheezy, you have three passes left. You know you got to... You got to use one up, right? Right, eventually. You know that. I'm right? breaking the rules. I'm giving you 15 bets today. I'm going 50 percent over what we're supposed to do because it's UFC 300, and I'm behind in this contest, so I need more bets. Okay, <laughs> fair, fair enough. Let's go. Breaking the rules. Let's Why go. not? I have one pass left, and uh, if you guys could, we have 1,284 watching between YouTube and Twitter. We appreciate you all. If you guys have not already, be sure to like the video. Like I said earlier, um, you guys in the chat, you guys watching from home are Jalen Turner. The like button is Bobby Green, and I am Carrie Hatley. I want you guys to smash the like button, and I, as Carrie Hatley, I'm not stopping you from doing it. So, so, so do it. So do it. We do appreciate it quite a bit. All right, uh, what we're going to do now is hit up the main card opener, and money is pouring in. Money is pouring in on one Cody Brundage. Bo Nickel was sitting around minus 2,500. He's currently minus 1,600. And we have Cody Brundage, who was sitting around plus 1,200. He's sitting at plus 850, so money is pouring in late on Cody Brundage. Money is pouring on late on the over one and a half as well. So interesting line movement here on this fight. Um, I'm going to kick this one off just because I'm going to use up my my third and final pass on this one. You know, there's there's not much sticking out. I think the under one and a half is a solid parlay piece, but I'm not giving out a minus 300 on, on the best bet show. I think Bo Nickel probably does get a takedown, gets on top, and whether it's a knockout or sub, I think he does finish in the first round. But yeah, very interesting this lineman because money's, you know, a lot of money's coming in on Brunage, it looks like. This line's moving and it's moving, it's moving very quickly. So I'm gonna pass on it. Don't really see anything sticking out, but um, I think Bo Nickel obviously gets it done. Uh Wheezy, are you uh <laughs> laying one unit on Bo Nickel to win 0 0.05 units? As tempting as that sounds, Brady, I am not. I'm going to use up my first pass here. Uh, yeah, all the nickel props are juiced to the tits. And I was actually going to try to get Brundage at plus 1,200 for a quarter unit just because banana peel things happen sometimes. And there's only six minutes of pro career MMA uh, for Bone Nickel. So we still got a lot to learn about this young man. But what we've seen so far is very impressive. I'm just staying out of the way here. Going to use up a pass and wait for the next fight. He finally used the pass. Finally did it. Finally did it. 
Uh, Brady, if Bo loses, will you shave your eyebrows? Absolutely not. Um, I would not shave my eyebrows. It sounds like a, a terrible, terrible idea. Um, Gordo, what are you liking for this main card opener? Yeah, this line movement's interesting. It's a little fishy. Uh, oh, I wonder what it is. But um, no, we still have the biggest favorite in UFC history, I believe, on some sports books at least. Uh, the guy is primed here for success. It's not Cody Brundage on the main card. It's Bo Nickel. So no hot take in saying that Bo Nickel wins. My method of betting this one, though, is pretty simple. Do you think it's a KO or a submission? To me, I think it's more likely than not Bo Nickel put on the main card he wants to perform, and whether that be with ground and pound, uh, maybe a bit better place than Malcoon did, or on the feet looking to use that striking, I, I do think Bo Nickel's able to go out there and get a KO, and that's my preferred method. But instead of taking him by KO at plus 130, just give me fight ends in KO at plus 125. Why would I want to go out there and pay the extra, or get the extra five cents when, you know what, what's Cody Brunner's path to victory? It's probably catching him with something. I'm going to try to cover my bases here. Fight ends in KO plus 125. I do think that's the preferred method for both guys here, and, and although I do think it's Bo Nickel most of the time, looking to cover my bets. All right, fight ends by knockout at plus 125 for Gordo. Uh, Guru, what are you liking for this main card opener? I like exactly what Gordo said and the fact that uh, I think this fight absolutely ends by KO. I think uh, a lot of people felt that Bo was going to get the submission. But if you really watch Cody uh, on tape, he he really shells up when he gets hit, and especially on the ground. So I really – and. Bo, you got to imagine starts to, you start to fall in love with your hands, and if you don't feel any threat, you're gonna throw him. So I'm imagining he's gonna look for the KO. So I did find a uh, Bo Nickel by KO plus one seventy or plus one sixty two over on uh, Bet three six five. So I do have that up. Here. So you're going Nickel KO plus one seventy. Correct. All right, so so we got uh, Guru and Gordo leaning towards the KO, me and Wheezy leaning towards the pass, but uh looks like a lot of people are maybe taking the, the big dog shot on Cody Brundage here. Uh, let's see here. Somebody said Cody Brundage by by DQ. Hey, I mean, that's that's probably one of his best paths, and here is a, probably a DQ. Mr. Bubbles liking the sub. Brundage by bad decision, which Nickel dominates, would be a very bad, very bad decision, I'd, I'd imagine. Uh, Bo K01 is plus 275. You guys, I'm sure Gordo and uh, Guru don't mind that at all. Uh, I placed a lotto ticket on Cody uh, round one. I think that's, that's probably how he wins if, if he does. I cashed uh, Cody Brundage round one where he, when he knocked out uh, Malcolm. Uh, who was it? Jacob Malcoon. He, he brutally knocked that guy out, right? Um, cashed that there. We have um, Adono here. We got New York rental with the 499. You guys have to. I should have I should have read this before I pulled it up. I saw I saw the dono. I saw the dono. I got excited. I should have read it. But uh since it is it is already up, um, and we have to pick New York Rental says you guys have to pick. Would you smash Verna Janaroba or Josie Ann Nunez? Uh without a question, it's Josie Ann Nunez. You know, I just somebody <laughs> asked me something like this before, and just I just I I, I imagine just looking down or at Verna Jana Robin, and she's just looking back at you. I mean, just, <laughs> I, I couldn't do that. So it's, it's Josie and Nunez. Um, and, and yeah, uh, Wheezy, what, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I think you're wrong. I think it's Verna. <laughs> I think it's Verna all day long, man. And here's why somebody stole me a picture of Josie Annie Nunez and Joe Benavidez <laughs> in the same room at the same time. And you'll convince me that I'm not about to bang a dude. At least I know with Virna, they're I'm getting a female. Dudes. So, they're, no, um, they're yeah, dudes. man, I'm going. I'm going with Virna on that one. That's an easy one for your uncle Weezy. You that's like me. saying, would you rather have Benavidez or Rob Schneider? Ooh, that is Literally. true. That's an excellent point, Gordo. I didn't think about that. That is true. Um, <laughs> holy crap! I got to be careful when I'm when I'm when I'm pulling some of these up. But uh, Justin with the four ninety nine, appreciate you, Justin. And another 499. Very, very generous saying, uh, Brady, let's go. Best of luck to you, Justin. Hopefully, you enjoy the card tonight. Um, I can't believe. What? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you guys? What's wrong with you guys? Seriously. All right. Um, back back to some fights. You know, no more banging Verna Jandarob or, or Josie Ann Nunez. You guys are you guys are terrible. Um, but what is not terrible is this fight. We got Armin Sarukian going against Charles Oliveira. We got Saruki into my. You didn't ask one. me. You didn't even. You didn't even ask me what I thought. I didn't. Okay. 
I wasn't going listen, to, but what listen, do you think? Listen, honestly, I got to go with Mirna because she has blue eyes. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, one blew this way, one blew that way. You're sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now that we got that out of the uh, of the way, uh-huh. we got uh, Charles Oliveira, Armin Saruki, and Armin Saruki minus two twenty two, Oliveira plus one eighty seven, uh, Wheezy. I gotta I gotta take a piss, so try to make this breakdown at least a minute. Yeah, you got it. This is a great fight. It's probably my favorite fight on the entire card. Um, with Saruki, and you got a twenty seven year old, I think, uh, that is just getting started. Uh, first fight in the UFC against Islam Makachev, and he actually took him down in the first round. Um, a, a young man who's climbing that ladder and looking very good while he's doing it, going up against a guy in Olivero who's won 11 of his last 12 fights, and 10 of those 11 wins are by finish. The only guy he didn't finish was a literally insane Tony Ferguson whose arm was bent the wrong way for like six consecutive seconds, but he would not tap. So... You've got an, an absolutely explosive finisher in Charles Oliveira, who's showing a little bit more durability in recent fights, the ability to kind of come back from adversity, something that we did not see from him at all early in his career. And then again, we didn't see it against Makachev as well, but we might be able to forgive him for losing to the best fighter on planet Earth in, in lightweight right now. So it's a, it's a very interesting stylistic matchup. I have a small bet half a unit on uh, Armand Sarukian to win by decision at plus 350. And I have a one unit bet on Charles Oliveira's finish only prop on DraftKings Sportsbook at plus 165. And that's what I'm going to give out on the show because I don't think Armin gets a finish here. So I'm willing to say that if there is a finish, I think it's on the Oliveira side, probably more than 50%. So to get it at plus 165 to me feels like the best plus EV bet to make on this fight. I know Charles isn't the most durable guy. I'm just hoping that he's more durable than he was early in his career when he was getting the reputation of being a quitter. So I think that this is a phenomenal fight. I could see either guy winning, and I've got bets on both sides, but I'll give out that finish only for Charles Oliveira, plus 165. All right, Weezy taking the finish only for Charles Oliveira. Guru, what are you liking for this fight? Honestly, one of the best fights on the card. Uh, a very, very important fight, and um, I don't want, I don't want to sound like a casual, but I do feel like it's flying under the radar in some ways because of the BMF title and the main event and you know Rakic and and Jiri. But this fight is just absolutely fantastic. Everybody looking forward to Charles Dubronx. So it's really tough to pick against him. Like he's not somebody you want to bet as a favorite, but somebody you do want to look on as a as a plus two hundred dog. And Armin really does have the just he's just on the right path right now, right? Everything's going his way. He really didn't lose that Gamrot fight, if we're just being honest, and we really watched that fight back. Um, he's a very high level talent. He's already got the narrative that he's fought Islam Mahachev, so you get to re- you get to redo that fight again. Um, I just think Armin ends up getting it done, but I was just kind of struggling to figure out exactly how. So I ended up passing for this fight, but wow, am I excited to watch. All right, Guru using up his third and final pass of the card. I have used up my third and final pass. Weezy still has two passes. Gordo, you have uh, one pass left. Are you passing on this fight, or is there something that you like here? I am passing on this one. Uh, I think if anything, I'd probably look towards some Armand late KO props, but uh, I think it's when I'd rather just sit back, watch, and and enjoy it uh, as a fan here. So I'm going to pass on this one. Yeah, for for me, um, I do like that that finish only for Oliveira. Um, could Armand finish him? Sure, but I mean, Charles Oliveira is one of the most, if not the most dangerous guy in the division. Just tons and tons of finishes. Like the last time Oliveira did win a decision was against Tony Ferguson, where he like ripped his arm off. I'm still not sure, you know, how Ferguson didn't tap, and then he ended up tapping to. To, or he went to sleep against Bobby Green, actually. But for me, um, I like that finish only. I'm going to get a little more aggressive, though. I mean, I'm going to take Charles Oliveira inside the distance at plus 275. I think Armin's an absolute beast. I think there's a reason he's a decent-sized favorite. I think he can go out there and, and win minutes and, and moments in this fight. But I just I don't want to count Charles Oliveira out here. I mean, how can you count him out? This guy has wins against very good guys like Dustin Poirier, 
Justin Gaethje, Michael Chandler. He's extremely dangerous wherever the fight goes on the feet. He has power, really good submission game as well. And I mean, it should, would it really shock anybody if Charles Oliveira went out there and pulled off an upset and did it in dominant fashion? Not me. So, you know, inside the distance for Oliveira, plus 275 is too big for me to pass up. So I'm taking the inside the distance there for Oliveira. Uh, we used to take in the finish only. I like that. And then Gordo and Guru are passing on this one. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are on those Armin uh, late sub props. They are they are big numbers. They are big numbers. He does have some some subs on his on his record. Not any in the UFC, but I don't see how this fight goes to decision. I mean, I was looking at their Armin's record. He has taken a couple guys to decision, like like Matt Frivola took him to decision. So I could see it. Uh, Armin is a future champ. Yeah, it's hard to not think that. I mean, this guy's only 27 years old, has a ton of upside. Uh, Brain says Armin. Hart says Charles. I think a lot of people are are thinking that as well. Uh, Jan bet the under 91.5 significant strikes at minus 115. Love that bet, to be honest. Yeah, that is a pretty high number. For what fight? There's no uh, way that this was placed at 91 and a half for this re fight. There's remember, he gets, no he, gets, he gets his lines in the Czech Republic. Oh, my God. God, yeah, it's a great line, dude. Yeah, he has <laughs> he gets incredible lines. I'm always like, Where'd you where'd you get that line? And he's like, Holy um, shit. His, his book. I, I wish I had his book with some of the stuff he's getting. So yeah, take it. would break of that. my model if it saw 91 and a half. <laughs> yes, it, it it certainly would. Um, let's see. Uh the John saying talking about the 300 k bonuses, canceling out most decisions. I'd be surprised if any male fight goes the distance. I think I'm only picking like a couple to go the distance. All right, so let's move on to the next fight. We have the first title fight of the card, and it is the BMF title on the line. And very interesting line movement here. Justin Gaethje, when this fight first got opened up, um, he opened up at minus 140, and people pushed the line all the way down to minus 285. And since then, you know, money's just been pouring in on, on Max Holloway. Holloway was as high as plus 245 at one point. And you see the, the, the downslope there, just money constantly pouring in on Holloway to the point where he's only plus 130 now. So people liking them some Max Holloway. Gordo, are you liking yourself some Max Holloway here? Or are you going a different route? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think we've yeah, I'm wearing the Holloway merch. I am a pretty big fan here, and that's a side I'm going to be taking. Um, uh, you know what? This guy just goes out there and delivers great performances. And not to say that Justin Gaethje is not a great opponent. I think it's great for an amazing matchup, and, and this is going to be one of my most highly anticipated matchups like, ever, really. It's a, it's a great matchup. But I, I think when it comes down to it, when we're looking at flaws in both these guys, I, I do think it's a good spot to have some plus money on Max Holloway. First things first, this is a spite fight that's expected to go all 25 minutes. It is favored to go that way. And if that's the case, I want my money on the underdog who's going to throw more volume and has proven to, you know, have the decent durability to go out there and do so. We have seen Gaethje succumb to pressure. We've seen him finish before. Whereas Holloway, you know, he's going to go out there and fight the best ability for 25 minutes. I, I just think at the end of the day, if this is going to be a close decision, I want money on a guy who's going to throw more volume at, who is also at plus money. A little bit of a homer pick with my boy here. I'll be cheering for him big, both emotionally and financially. All right. So you're taking the Max Holloway money line at uh, plus one, da, 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 like 35. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Max Holloway money line for Gordo plus 135. Wheezy, I have a feeling you might be passing on this one. What do you got? No, like I said, I'm giving you 15 bets today, Brady. <laughs> so we are not passing on this fight, actually. Oh, wow. um, what what I find interesting about this fight is that Gaethje right now minus 150. That's 60% implied probability to win the fight. His decision prop is plus 300. 25% implied probability to win the fight. So you're talking about getting a 35% break in implied probability to take Gaethje to win by decision against a guy in Max Holloway who might be the most durable guy to ever set foot in a UFC cage across all weight classes. So when we're talking about on a fight where we've are on a card where we've got elite fighters squaring off in every single fight and we say the shots that we want to take are the plus EV shots because a lot of these fights are going to wind up as coin flips. That's my way of finding value. I'm going to take Justin Gaethje. I'm going to trust um, Max Holloway's durability because I think that's one of the things that we can still trust in this world. And I'm going to take Gaethje by his best win condition, in my opinion, which is the decision at plus 300 to get that price from minus 150 to plus 300 and hopefully get a big hit. 
All right, Weezy taking the Gaethje decision plus 300. Guru, what do you like for this fight? This, I'm loving this fight. Uh, anybody that hates on the BMF title, yes. Is it a real title? No, probably not. But this, the way that they do it, the fighters that they have in it, absolutely fantastic. Um, th these are two absolute fan favorites. What I'm going to go with here is I, I think it to surprise everybody. I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure why, if the fight is favored to go the distance, why Justin Gaethje's favored. Honestly, I'm, I'm not sure. Max Holloway has absolutely continued to work on and improve his counter game. And you've seen time and time again that Max Holloway is the more proficient striker and the more accurate striker. So if you expect it to happen over time, why would you not expect the more proficient striker to start to pull away there? What happens when Justin Gaethje hits him with his best shot and Bless Express is just standing there unmoved? What happens then? We've seen Justin Gaethje go to war with Eddie Alvarez, with Dustin Poirier. He starts to fade late. I expect, I expect Max's cardio to be improved here at 155. And he already had some of the best cardio in the UFC. Had the most output ever in a fight. Thrown the most strikes in UFC history. Landed the most strikes in UFC history. Give me Max Holloway. Round three, four, five KO at plus twelve hundred. Yeah, big number. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. I, I think that's very much in play. Um, I really like violence in this fight. I'm going with the fight doesn't go to decision minus one twenty here. Uh, Justin Gaethje has nine fights scheduled for five rounds. All nine of them have finished inside the distance. Um, the latest, the one that went the latest was that Ferguson fight, but a lot of these are finishing with like in the first two and a half rounds. So um, the way I see this fight playing out, like if this fight does end up going 25 minutes, it's going to be the greatest fight of all time. I think these guys are going to swing dicks until somebody falls, and I think it's going to come down to who has the bigger dick in this one. Um, I don't want to want to pick a side, especially with this steam on the Max Holloway money line. I think. If you got Max at plus 200, you obviously did your job. Um, but at, at this point, I think both guys are live for a finish. We've seen Max Holloway hurt. He got hurt against Yaya Rodriguez. He got hurt against Vulcan the third fight. Got hurt a little bit against the Korean Zombie. He got hurt against Dustin Poirier. Has not went down yet, but I think if he is going to get finished, you know, Gaethje would be that guy to finish him. And then, I mean, it wouldn't shock me if Holloway was able to finish Gaethje like Guru was talking about. You know, Holloway's not a a one punch knockout power puncher, but you know, he does finish guys attritionally. And I could see like an attritional KO down the stretch in three, four or five. So I'm just going with the fight. He doesn't go. I think somebody's getting served here. And again, I think these are swinging dicks until, until one man falls. So now cannot... one last thing I want to add on this one. Have you guys seen the finish only lines? Yes. Does that surprise you at all? I think plus two fifty on Holloway. Um, that's something I almost gave out here, but uh, I do think it's going to be a fun one. I, I just didn't know what you would think, considering you're the one taking the under. I mean, Fandle opened up the finish only for Holloway at plus 500, and, oh and DraftKings opened wow. up the finish only for Holloway at plus 450. And by the way, um, I, they opened up these uh, the round props as well, like last week or so, like maybe even two weeks ago. And the Holloway three, four, five props were ridiculous. Now I think it was like round three was like plus five thousand something. Round four is like plus six thousand. And wow. even like the some people were on like the three, four, five sub props. They were like plus fifteen thousand for like a round five sub. So these max uh, finish props have been getting hit throughout the week, but they did open them up at crazy numbers, including that finish only. But yeah, it has um, came down a lot, which which it should. I mean, Max Holloway, one of the most durable, if not the most durable fighter in UFC history. Uh, someone is, is getting served. I, I hope so. I hope somebody does get served. Justin is, is decking this dude. He'd be the first one. He'd be the first one to deck Mac Holloway, Max Holloway. Uh, Eric agreeing with, with guru a poker saying sick bet. I'm not sure. Oh, he's probably talking about guru's plus 1200. That is a sick bet. I think that's, yeah. it's, it's on the table. Um, some dick swinging. Yeah. I think these two are gonna, gonna swing dicks. Uh, Max Holloway. Yeah. The Max Hall, even by KO in general is a pretty, pretty big number pretty big number let's see yeah Gaethje definitely has the power advantage that is that is not debatable that is not debatable um finish only super interesting it is at, at a big big plus number that's for sure max uh fourth or fifth round yeah, i think if max does finish it's third fourth and fifth I, i'd be shocked if it's early and then what side is a three four five on i'm assuming it's fan duel right correct all right uh finally yeah i mean if 
these guys are getting 300k. I mean, I don't see how they how they don't. I think uh, the check is already written to these two for sure. All right, guys, we will move on to the co-main event. We got Zhang Wei Li who went against Yan Zhao Nan. We got Zhang Wei Li as the second biggest favorite on the card, right behind one Bo Nickel. We have uh, a, a line that has kind of stayed there around the same throughout the week. Um, you know, she's been sitting around minus 500 or so for throughout the week. Um, hasn't really moved a ton. We'll start with you, uh, Guru. What are you liking for this co-main event? This is a fantastic fight, and uh, China versus China here. And, uh, you know, Zhang Wei Li, somebody I've been a fan of for a very, very long time, uh, put on the best women's fight of all time with Joanna Janjacek, uh right before COVID there. Um, Yan Zhao Nan is somebody who I cashed a bet on and got to watch knock out Jessica Andrade live. So that was also fantastic. She was a plus money dog there. Um, somebody who's been very profitable. Um, at the same time, I remember it was, you know, young into my podcast days over on Chronic Combat. Um, I picked Carla Esparza at plus money over Yan Janan, and she ended up getting the crucifix on her and beating the piss out of her. It hasn't been that long since then, although I, I feel like I'm leagues better as, at a, as a podcaster two, two, three years later. Um, it really wasn't that long ago. Um, and why do we think that her takedown defense has gotten any better? Because she's a team alpha male? Why? Did Song Yadong's takedown defense get any better? Why? Because she stuffed some Mackenzie Dern takedowns? Because Mackenzie Dern's take that offense is so good. I'm just not super convinced. So the, the minus 500 makes a lot of sense. Minus 400 makes sense to me for, for Zhang Wei Li because she's a smart fighter and I expect her to get it to the ground because we'll be frank, right? On the feet, it's going to be way too close for comfort because that's Zhang best chance, the boxing. But she's going to take her down and she's going to take her down over and over. She's got solid cardio. I actually imagine she gets the finish on the ground at some point but just because uh it's plus money i don't even have to pick a side give me fight doesn't start round four no championship rounds uh plus 118 all right fight won't start round four plus 118 for guru uh gordo what are you liking for the co-main event yeah, very similar outlook uh, than uh, Guru on that one. It, it's a very fun match, in my opinion, but one where both these uh, women have the, the spots where they want to fight the fight, and, and I do think that it comes down to weaknesses in both areas. We just saw Yang go out there, get demolished on the ground, and Wei Li just demolished somebody on the ground. So that just means for someone to have success there. Uh, I would not be surprised if Wei Li goes out there and dominates Yang the same way that Carlos Barza did. So I, I, I am on violence in this matchup. I took the... Um, under four and a half here instead of uh, the inside the distance for Whaley here, just because we have seen Whaley clip before and, and the price isn't that much different. I, I do think if Yanso now is going to we'll have to win this fight, she's going to have to land the perfect shot because I don't think she's going to be able to win minutes based on the ground game we've seen from both good ladies here. So give me Whaley to be the stronger fighter, to dominate from top position, but overall, give me the under. It uh, looks like the under four and a half is like minus 135 ish. Sure. Yeah. Whatever is best. All right, um, it's a, a lot of books are saying differently, but I'm trying to go with like books that are like somewhat legit. Um, I want to win fair and square. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, yeah, I'm on the the same side as as, as you guys as well. I'm just taking Zhang inside the distance, though. I think it's uh, minus minus one ten. Yeah, I, I think she goes out there and I think she pays off this price tag at minus five hundred. I think she looks minus five hundred with the right game plan. Like if she goes out there and strikes with with Yan Jana for twenty five minutes, she's not looking like a big favorite and might even lose the fight. But the fact of the matter is, she is going to wrestle. And once she does get the fight down to the mat, I think she smashes here. I think it could be a KO. I think it could be a sub. I think it could be very dominant. I like uh, Zhang Willy into the distance at a at a pick em. Uh Wheezy. What are you liking for this fight? I think you do have to pass, but any any, yeah. any thoughts on the fight as a whole? Yeah, I have to pass on the last two. And, and I, mean, I like Zhang a lot here. I think she wins. I think she probably wins inside the distance and makes it look pretty dominant. But, you know, she's minus 515 on the money line. That means all the props are juiced to the tits as well. So it's a good one to just stay away from. I think I'd be surprised if Yan found a way to win this fight, keep it standing for 25 and outpoint Zhang here. So, yeah, just going to stay away. All right, Weezy using up his second pass. He has he has one left. I'm curious to see which which fight he ends up passing on from here on out. Oh, uh, let's see. We got we have Solar Warden Ward in the building. What is up, with Solar? Um, best two fight parlay. Remind me at the end. Um, let's see. Go Holly for a, a lottery ticket. Not not for me. 
Let's see here. Uh, da, da, da. Zhang inside the distance. I agree. I agree. Willie by sub. Uh, Jan looks like she just uh, overwhelmed me in there. Yeah, I think a sub could be in there. I think a sub could be possible. All right. And let's move on to the next fight. We have the main event. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. We got Alex Pereira going against Jamal Hill. Looks like some late money is coming in on Alex Pereira. He is now a minus 142 favorite. Jamal Hill is sitting at plus 122. And let's start with Guru. Guru, what are you liking for this main event? I did it again. So I feel like a lot of people were kind of underwhelmed maybe with this main event because they like thought something absolutely spectacular or some big blockbuster Brock Lesnar type fight was going to be in here. But I'm honestly, as it, especially as it's gotten closer, I'm so excited for this fight. I got to see Pereira and uh, and Jiri fight live as well. So paid for that for the main event. Certainly happy to watch him fight the main event here. Um, one of my favorite bets of the week that I got in on early and the line has kind of moved up from was the over one and a half because the, which I'm not going to give out here, but the over one and a half was really interesting because I, I think that these guys are going to take their time, right? Like even though both are, obviously power strikers that can knock somebody out at, at the drop of a hat we haven't i haven't really seen especially lately them finish guys so so quickly you want to talk about jamal hill knocking out johnny walker i mean johnny walker you watch that regional scene tape he got knocked out four or five times in one fight like he's got no chin so even somebody like you know you watch jamal hill fight tiago santos he's getting late finishes i honestly think that's his best fight and his best finish in the ufc you know, finishing Jimmy Crute, why is that impressive? He just took Glover DeShera, a 43-year-old man, beat the piss out of him, yes, but didn't finish him, right? So you can say all you want, oh, it's in Brazil, they're not going to stop the fight. I mean, come on, man. He he didn't finish him. It was it was close, but Glover hung in there. So I, I, I think Pereira is also tough. He's got that revenge factor as well. And uh, even the fight that he knocked out, Izzy, at Madison Square Garden, uh, that was late. So give me fight to start round three at even money. All right. Uh, Guru taking the fight to start. Uh, fight starts round three at, at plus money, plus 100. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, minus 110, actually. Sorry. Minus 110. All right. Yeah. Guru taking the, the fight starts round three uh, plus or minus 110. Uh, I'll be clenching my butt for 10 minutes, but oh, um, of course. That's, I'm just hoping for a great fight. And then anybody can knock the piss out of each other whenever they want. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, Weezy, you have to use up your third and final pass here, but any thoughts on on this main event? I'm just really looking forward to it. Um, I think Jamal Hill's Achilles injury was enough for me to just say, look, um, it, there's no harm in passing, you know, because I, I feel like I'm missing a little bit of information about whether he's going to be fighting at, at, at uh, 100% or not, you know, and, uh, I know that, you know, medicine improves and that, um, uh, progress is made and that sometimes you can start to heal from injuries faster than you thought they could. I, I, rem I remember back when you used to have to take a full year off basically after a, uh, ACL injury. And I remember Adrian Peterson getting, tearing his ACL at the end of one season, coming back in the next season and basically setting the rushing record, you know? And then it was like, yeah, evidently now you can heal from an ACL in six months and be 100%. So uh, with all those questions uh, unanswered for me, I'm just going to stay away. I think this fight finishes inside the distance. These guys are both pretty shitty defensively, and they both hit extremely hard. But the bookies are on to it. It's minus 400. So, yeah, I'm just going to pass and enjoy a phenomenal main event. Yep, nothing, nothing wrong with that. It's going to be one to uh, absolutely enjoy. 138, just hoping everybody has fun. I, th I think they will. I think they will. And uh, Eric with the 499, I appreciate you, Eric, saying uh, thanks for the good content, gentlemen. Thank you, Eric, for coming in here, stopping by, and, and leaving a donut. Do, do appreciate that. All right, so I'm going to go with um, – I'm going to go with the Hill money line here, sitting at plus 122. And it's something that I did play uh, personally. I did play it small just because, like Weezy said, there are some concerns. Like, is Jamal Hill coming back too early? Is he 100%? What I will say is Jamal looked in incredible shape on the scale. It looks to be in career best shape. 
And I think there's some reasons to like Hill at plus money. Obviously, Pereira is very dangerous. You know, those nasty leg kicks, the left hook. But Jamal Hill is very, very high volume, landing over seven significant strikes per minute. He's very powerful. He's very durable. He's the younger fighter as well. So at plus money, I do like Hill. Um, and at, at plus 122, I will take the shot. So that'll be my best bet for the main event is taking the money line on Jamal Hill. I think it's uh, probably a knockout as well. But just give me the money line at plus money. Uh, Gordo, what are you liking for this main event? You know, I was laughing because I, I had the same play as Guru. I, I thought it'd be sharp taking the over here, uh, being a bit different than everybody, but I'm on the fight starts round three again as well. Exact same play, same reason as well. I, I just think it's going to take a little bit time to develop. It's be a fun striking affair. Both guys learning each other and maybe down the stretch, Hill's able to take over or Pereira's able to ke- clip them. But either way, I do think it's one that takes a little bit of time to develop and we do see the uh, third round here. All right. Yeah. There we go. So Weezy is passing on the prayer fight. Gordo taking the fight starts round three, and then Guru taking the fight starts round three. All right. Um, let's see. Achilles is, is definitely worse than than uh, ACL. Uh, that's, prayer that, but that was that's an interesting point too because you you mentioned how good of a shape he's in, and part of me has to consider whether it's partly because of how much PT he has to be doing be, for his Achilles. Like you're gonna be in good yeah. shape because of that and that's something i learned from tb my co-host who is a physical therapist so yeah, i was I shocked to... i was shocked to see the shape hill is in like that's the easily yeah. the best shape he's looked in um 100 yeah he'll hold to win within within two minutes uh 720 saying let's stack tonight let's do it let's do it good luck to you as well john um let's see appreciate you frank hill has a very lengthy one to you he does he does what if the main event goes the distance and boring? I mean, it wouldn't completely shock me if it went the distance, but it would completely shock me if it was boring. I mean, I don't. I think that's off the table. Hill gets KO'd in round three, um, and yeah, Alex does hit you know very differently. So it's an interesting fight, very interesting main event. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over all the bets for UFC 300, and then we're going to make sure everything's correct, and then we're going to give our best bet for the entire card. If you hit this best bet, your profit is going to double. So say, for example, Uncle Weezy's best bet is Yuri Prohoshka at plus 100. If he hits that, not only is he going to get uh, one unit, but he's going to get two units. So here we go. Um, I will kick us off. I'm going to go with a pass in the figgy fight to kick off the night. I'm going to take Jim Miller to win in rounds one or rounds two at plus 360. Taking the Andrade under two and a half rounds, uh, plus 115. Jalen Turner, one, two, minus 118. The Lopez under one and a half, plus 140. Harrison inside the distance, plus 133. Passing on the Cater fight, I'm taking the Yiri under two and a half, minus 155. Passing on the Nickel fight, uh, Oliveira inside the distance, plus 275. The Holloway fight doesn't go to decision, minus 120. The Zhang inside the distance, minus 110. Jamal Hill money line, plus 122. So, yeah, don't have a ton of big plus money spots as usual, but I think probably my favorite bet on the entire card is, is actually going to be that Hall the Way Gaethje fight doesn't go to decision at, at minus 120. Again, I think these two are going to swing dicks until somebody falls. Don't know when, but I think somebody will fall. So, maybe the fight doesn't go in that Hall the Way fight for my best bet. All right, Uncle Wheezy, you're taking the Figgy fight goes the distance plus 155. You're taking the Jim Miller finish only plus 100. The Andrade fight won't start round three, a plus 185. Turner sub, plus 850. Uh, Yusuf money line, plus 125. Kayla Harrison, ITD, plus 133. Cater money line, plus 145. Yuri money line, plus 100. Passing on the bone nickel fight. You're taking Oliveira finish only, plus 165. Gaethje by decision, plus 300. Uh, Zhang under four and a half rounds. See, we made a mistake. Yeah, we made a mistake. yeah that's, that's a pass, and I think that's Gordo's bet. Yep, this, that's, why we, that's why we do this. Yeah, that's why we do this. Okay, so you're passing on the Zhang fight, um, yeah. you're, and then you're passing on the Pereira fight. Uh, yes. Weezy, is all that now correct? And if so, what is your best bet for the entire card? Yeah, that's correct now, and I'm swinging for the fences. I'm going for that uh, that Turner sub. You know, let's turn it into 17 units instead of eight and a half if it hits. And uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's a live outcome. Clubland sub is definitely live as hard as. Uh, Jalen Turner uh, hits. So, yeah, always looking to swing for the fences on uh, the bets that we get to double. All right, looking for 17 units for this one. All right, so, uh, Gordo, you are taking Figgy KO plus 175. Jim Miller finish only plus 100. Passing on the Andrade fight. Moicano sub plus 400. Use of money line plus 125. Harrison KO plus 350. Passing on the Cater fight. You're taking the Yeri under two and a half minus 155. The Nickel fight ends in KO plus 125. Passing on the Oliveira fight. 
Max Holloway on the money line, plus 130. Zhang, under four and a half, minus 135. And then Pereira, fight starts round three, minus 110. Is all that look correct? And if so, what is your best bet for UFC 300? It, it does look correct. I'm excited. I can't wait. Let's go best bet Harrison KO plus 350. Uh, we're going for some big money there, and I, I do think that should be a bit shorter. All right. To win seven units. And last but not least, we got Guru Scouting MMA taking Figgy 1-2 plus 135. Jim Miller ITD plus 250. Andrade under 2.5 plus 115. You're passing on the Turner fight. You're taking Lopez 1-2 plus 165. You're taking the Harrison fight. Goes the distance minus 105. Passing on the Sterling fight. Um... Or what is that? Yeah, passing. I put, I put money on passing on Sterling fight there. Okay, uh, Yuri uh, wins in round one or round two at plus two ten. You're taking the Bo Nickel KO plus one seventy passing on the Oliveira fight. Max Holloway round three four or five KO at plus twelve hundred. Uh, the Zhang Wei Li Yan Jianan fight won't start round four plus one eighteen. And then you're taking the Pereira fight starts round three minus one ten. Does all that look correct? And if so, what is your best bet for UFC three hundred? Yes, sir. Looks looks correct. Uh, listen, it's a prop show. I got a hole to climb out of. We're going best bet. Max freaking Holloway, round 345 KO, plus 1200. Blessed Express, baby. Best boxing, in the, best boxing in the UFC. Should show it tonight. To win 24. I feel like a puss now, you know, to, taking, the, taking the easy way out. But I do like that. That Holloway fight doesn't go. Um, but yeah, uh, Max Holloway for Guru. We're right there. You, we, we're right there. We have we're, the same idea. I'm just picking a side. I'm we are right the flag. there. 100%. That's a, that's a big plus money number. Um, Gordo taking the Harrison KO. Weezy taking a big plus money number as well with the Turner sub. And uh, I'm, I'm being the puss, the puss in the panel. But I do like that spot quite a bit. All right. Uh, so there we have it. We went through every single fight. Thank you all so much for hanging out. I had a big crowd here for a, for a big UFC 300 card. If you guys have not already, be sure to smash a like button. Subscribe here to the channel. Go subscribe to these guys. Going to kick it around. Uncle Weezy, let the people know where they, they can find you. I'm sure you're completely exhausted because you did 70 shows this week. I mean, I don't even know how many I did this week, but I think it was eight or nine, and I'm about to get on the live stream for Pub Sports Radio, the watch-along as well, because it's UFC 300, and I did have a two-week vacation prior to this week, so it was nice to come back to the best card of the year and break down these fights with a bunch of great people on a bunch of different shows this week, and thank you for having me on, Brady. Thank the chat for being lively and active here. Like almost a thousand of you hanging out. This is bonkers. Love doing this with you guys. You can find me on my YouTube channel, Uncle Wheezy. You can find me on Pub Sports Radio. Uh, you can find me on the MMA Engine YouTube channel. And you can find me stacking cash tickets like flapjacks for UFC 300. Good luck to everybody on all your bets. Let's have some fun watching these fights and making some money watching them. Let's do it. Fights are kicking off in less than uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Looking forward to it. Uh, Gordo, let the people know where they can find you. Thanks for coming on. It was, a, it was a fun show. It was a fun show, but I'm ready to go, man. It's fight time. USC 300. Been looking forward to it a very long time. Let's hope it delivers. You can find all my work on Twitter at Gambles Gordo on YouTube. Plays and Fade Sports. I also do some work with Brett Apley over at Establish the Run. Lots of content as well. Maybe not as much as Wheezy, but uh, I'm excited for it. Fight time is here. I wish everyone the best of luck in all your betting endeavors. Let's make some money, guys. There we go. Last but not least, we got Guru. You know, you've been drinking those uh, those Jim Millers. They're out the show. How are you feeling? You're looking forward to the card and uh, let the people I'm know where they can find you. I'm thirsty. I need a Jim Miller right now. I'm very thirsty. Listen, uh, Brady, seriously, thank you so much for having me on. Being on UFC 300 is uh, a, a true honor. And uh, be, hanging out with you guys is always a freaking blast. Uh, cannot absolutely wait. If you guys like what I put out, please go check out my podcast. Chronic Combat Conversations over on YouTube. We go live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. We bring on fantastic guests. We've had on, I've had on all three of these lovely gentlemen on my show. Hope we can have all three of them back at some point soon. Um, but seriously, thank you guys so much again for having me. And uh, this was a freaking blast. Good luck tonight. Yeah, good luck to you as well, Wheezy, Gordo, and Guru. Uh, thank you all for coming on. I appreciate everybody hanging out in the chat. Everybody besides that one guy. That one guy that that asked that sick, sick question about Verna Janaroba and, and Josie Ann Nunez. Um, um, I did not appreciate appreciate a question like that. But um, everybody else, appreciate you hanging out. Please like on your way out, subscribe on your way out, and enjoy the card. Enjoy UFC 300. Let's make some money, and we'll talk to you guys soon. See you later.